unable to activate ija mode this show is exactly what i expected and that's not a good thing hello beautiful people welcome back to under the african sun or welcome to under the african sun i'm your friend the african npc and thanks for joining me today as we look at iwaju a little bit ago i had a look at the trailer and i had a few things to say besides the princess sofia looking ass graphics it's generic it's got nothing going for it except its generic story set in africa but that could turn out to be a good thing i hope the nigerian setting plays into the story otherwise what's the point don't let the story be set in nigeria just because it's african was i right what do i mean it's exactly what i expected is it any good all good questions but a far more important question needs to be answered first i'll be 100% honest i don't like the way this show looks and i blame disney why you ask let's take a short trip to about a week ago and finally it feels like a portfolio like here this is what we're capable of making a tech demo if you will or some checked box on some exec's desk that's from my kizazi moto generation fire review link in the description and in that video i praise some of the visuals of the show so disney explain to me why this animation style was chosen over the far superior offerings in your previous african centric afro futuristic show unless you expect no one to see this show if i had to give it a rating 5 out of 10 no 4 out of 10 otin had like three facial expressions i guess disney isn't planning on selling any merch of her her yeah otin is female Did you just see this? The cast did a good job. They can be proud of what they accomplished. But I have to say, sometimes they speak in like a flat way or say things in a way nobody speaks. I don't even mean it in a Nigerian pidgin kind of way. Just in a nobody talks like that kind of way. It's more noticeable in episode 1 and as the show goes on, it's less noticeable. Overall, seven out of ten. If you care, this is your one and only spoiler warning. Okay, so the show revolves around Tola, a ten-year-old manipulative brat who ruined her father. The show is about Tola, an island girl and herself. You can't say that. Okay, what should I say? Not that. Fine. The show follows Omotola Bike Martins, or Tola for short, and her quest to spend more time with her father, Tunde, an inventor working for Green Tech. Who might I add is suspiciously a single father from what we can see, since we never meet Tola's mom. I say suspicious because we meet Kole's mom later on, and she is also suspiciously single. Kole being Tola's friend, and the servant of the Martins household. The main antagonist is Bode de Silva, a gangster from the mainland, and his goons. He is responsible for a recent string of kidnappings in the area. The story picks up on Tola's 10th birthday as she plays the true victim of the show. Uncle G, I hope you get paid enough to deal with that child. Anyway, she manipulates Uncle G into taking her to the airport to pick up her father from a trip to her father's displeasure. of which he was right this is how the main villain gets the martins onto his radar over the next episodes we get introduced to the other characters and some characterization here and there tola is a rich girl and she acts like it kole is a young boy and is just trying to take care of his mother he has links to bode and being responsible for the recent string of kidnappings He manipulates Kole into putting Tola in danger. You know me, I laugh in the face of danger. With Tola's kidnapping, everyone is out to save her. 
and via some cartoony hijinks, she is safe by season's end. You may be wondering, what about the lizard? No sweatshop in China accepted to make the figurines. Can you please stick to the script? Why so boring? Damn. Anyway, as far as I'm concerned, that lizard could have been in the last episode. The show does open with a training sequence for it, but besides that, it has little impact on the show. Till the last episode. At one point, Tunde tracks her to the kidnapper's hideout, but it's useless because he can't find her either way. The worst part about this, the whole battery issue she's been having is solved by this futuristic whip and a potato. Yes, a potato got us. I know potatoes are amazing, but damn. Maybe I'm wrong, and one day we'll have potato robotics. They did make a console controller out of potatoes. My point exactly. Moving on, Bode is defeated in the most ironic way. By a pair of Apple Vision Pro, by a pair of glasses live streaming a confession of his crimes to every screen in Lagos. I know things go viral, but this seemed a bit too quick. A pair of glasses started this, and a pair of glasses ended it. Hey, could this show be actually smart in commenting on how technology can be used for both good and bad? Not a chance. He called. A female Disney character who took responsibility for her actions. Bet that's one of the last things you thought you'd hear in 2024. Tola was a really great character. She had an okay arc and was an active protagonist, meaning she drove the plot. The other characters are okay and mildly relatable. They are nothing more than their role in the story. The show does a really great job of expressing its themes of class division. And sometimes, it really hits hard. Oh, you have been doing housework again. Huh? Honestly, sometimes I think you behave this way on purpose just to spite me. Hmm? What do people think of me if they saw you like this? Why are you sitting at my table? Huh? And with my daughter? Good evening, sir. How dare you show me such lack of appreciation and respect? You know, I would never have made such a mistake when I was in your position. Daddy, it's my fault. He's my friend and I wanted him This to... boy is taking advantage of your kindness. My friend gets in the back. While there are some continuity errors, they don't break the show but show a lack of attention to detail. Are you going to tell me these gods just evaporated? Or you forgot about their existence in the final episode? And for those of you who may think when Bode said this, Search the place, make sure no one else is here, and shut down the security system. They did something? Nah, without Miss Happiness, their collective IQ is in the single digits. Otin was a disappointment. She was just so boring and gave off Vicky from iRobot vibes. Oh my god, did you see the car wheels? I know, right? In the trailer reaction clip I played earlier, I had hopes for the show. None of them were met. It's a generic story set in Africa, against that Afrofuturism backdrop. This just confirms Disney thinks if you make it like Wakanda, it will reach a wider audience. Sadly, a story is more than that. Sure, there are a few Nigerian references and African culture things, but does it feel uniquely African? No. If anything, it feels like a lesser version of a story I've seen before. I just can't seem to remember what story. Final verdict? Go watch Kizazimoto Generation 5 instead. It's also on Disney+. Plus. However, shout out to Kugali for their involvement in the development of this show. I plan on reading some of their comics now that I've covered the show. I had never heard of them before and I appreciate new stories whenever I'm presented the opportunity to explore. With that, I thank you dear viewer for watching till this point. Since you made it this far, why don't you leave us a like? Or better yet, subscribe.
And before I leave you, check out these videos on screen. I've been your friendly African NPC, and this has been Under the African Sun. Catch you in the next one. Cheers.